What's up, idols? It's Cece Listen Through. Welcome back to my channel. And thank you so much for clicking on this video. Now, we are less than 200 amazing subscribers from that 100,000 subscriber goal. So if you like my content, please subscribe. Also, if you want to hear more of these insane foreigner dating and Korea story times, binge the playlist. We have dozens, maybe hundreds now, of these types of story times on this channel. And they're all put together in a playlist for you. Also, please help engage with this video. If you're shy and want to leave a comment, leave a comment that says, for the watch. For the watch. For the watch. For the watch. <laughs> One last thing, this video will probably have a lot of ads. I leave for Hong Kong next week and I'm still stressing out about how everything's gonna work out. So I need to save and earn some extra coins, so please forgive me. So anyway, we don't get many story times on my channel from guys, but we got a little treat for y'all today. Today's story comes from Lee Shang. He said, look, I'm not Chinese, but I don't have many options out there. He still wanted to follow the whole Disney theme and he decided to stick with Mulan. Funny enough, he actually has a foreign friend who got him into my channel. So thank you to whoever this friend is. We the best, you a genius. He also said being honest, he doesn't think guys are that bad, but of course not, you know? It's like you could go down the street, take a nice walk and pass dozens of normal people, but that one loud crackhead is the one that's gonna leave an impression on you and make you think this is not a good area. So of course, you know, there are most normal encounters with people, men and women, but the loudest ones are the ones that we're here to listen to. He said he's hoping to redeem his people. His words, not mine. I don't know if he means men. I don't know if he means Korean. I don't know if he means Korean men. So Lee Shang is in his 20s. He's been in Korea all his life. His parents wanted him to work abroad, so they made him take his foreign language studies very seriously. So he's fluent in Chinese and he's fluent in English. He's always been very traditional, following the traditional way about life in Korea. Study a lot, work hard to get into a really good university, settle down with a very beautiful, egg-yo, innocent, pure, wholesome Korean woman. Aim for that high paying, good office job. But this humdrum, copy and paste trajectory didn't quite sit right with him. He had a few girlfriends in high school, but he wants to start this story by sharing the first serious girlfriend he had. And this was after his military service and let's call her Dahe. They were together for years and he even thought about marriage. Mostly it was because of pressure from his family and her family. He didn't really want to get married so soon, not in his 20s. Especially because he said he felt like she wasn't the best for him. She was pretty childish, expected him to do everything. And he said, of course, she was very sweet in the beginning. Like every relationship is perfect in the beginning. But as she got comfortable, she started to do less and less for him. And it didn't take long for him to start to feel very unappreciated. But on the outside of Dahye, she was everything that Korean society wants and expects of Korean women. She was well-educated. She was very, very beautiful. She was polite enough to strangers mostly. And he never understood why she wasn't that nice to him. She was controlling. She didn't let him talk to other girls or have girls who were friends. He also said she got jealous very easily. And that's something he did not understand because he said looking at him, He's a very average looking guy. He never really got a lot of attention from girls. Growing up, he'd always heard that he was more kind or smart than handsome. And because Dahe was so beautiful, he felt like he had to make it work with her, especially because his family kept that pressure on him. So let's talk about what made the relationship fall apart. He, he dealt with this type of behavior for a few years with her. Now, he also worked a lot. That's pretty typical of Korean people. They, they work overwork all the time, are expected to work all the time, overtime without the overpay. He made really decent money, but his girlfriend always complained about how he wasn't spending enough time with her, spending enough money on her, or spending enough money on their future. Like she really wanted a house. She liked jewelry, she liked to go shopping, she liked to take trips. There's actually one incident where he has work functions. Like if you guys know what a hoeshik is, it's usually when you go out with your boss and your coworkers and you do karaoke, you go and drink and eat dinner together with your coworkers. And there was one time in particular where he came home late. But of course he came back and he was questioned to no end. She was very jealous and thought it was with someone else. Stop it, get some help. So because of that, she told him he's not allowed to go to Hueshik's anymore. And as you can imagine, that was quite detrimental to his career, his job. He said he honestly can't remember when she did something nice for him, whether it's like for his birthday or for Christmas or just because she loved him. So one day, to make up for how late he's been working, he decided to surprise her by sending her a dress and a bracelet that he knew she wanted. He thought it would sweeten the surprise by not contacting her, like to just let the gift arrive, and then once the gift arrived, call me and thank me for it. He wanted to take her out to dinner while she was wearing this new dress. So you know, Li Sheng sends the dress. He's all excited, waiting any, any day now, any minute now for her call, her text of excitement and gratitude. But that call never came. So he decided to call her and text her and check in on her since she wasn't contacting him. And she didn't answer his texts or his calls back. So after a day of her not responding to him, he decided to go to see Dahye at her house. And she wasn't nice about it. Apparently, Dahye was mad at him because he didn't call her or text her when he was supposed to. So this was her way of teaching him a lesson. And he explains how it was all a part of the surprise, but she didn't care to listen to him. 
Oh, brother, this guy stinks! And I can actually relate to this. Pause the story time for a brief second. Back in 2021, I sent my mom like this shiatsu foot massager for Mother's Day, but I didn't want to call her the days before because I wanted her to think that I forgot Mother's Day only for her to get this package and be like, oh, my baby didn't forget. I thought it was sweet and a surprise, but it didn't take long for her to complain to my grandmother and read me for filth and be like, apparently I don't have a daughter because I didn't get no phone call or nothing. So I called her like the day after Mother's Day and I was like, did you check the mail? Like there's something for you. And she's like, oh, baby girl, thank you. So I get, I actually get what he means by this, like no contact and then let the surprise be like the contact, you know? The surprise hits differently when there's no contact, you know? But y'all wanna hear something messed up? That hey wore the dress out with her friends. He intended for her to wear this bracelet and this dress on a nice dinner that he had planned for them, but she ignored him and decided to wear it going out with her friends. That's another thing. She was allowed to go out with her friends, but he couldn't go out with his friends. He had to reply to her within a certain time frame, but she could take her time responding to him whenever. This led to a lot of resentment he had towards her. It also made his self-esteem plummet. He thought all the time about how it would probably be better to just be single at this point, but he didn't want to let his family down. He was doing so well at following this plan that they had out for him. And if he has to start over with a whole new girl, it takes longer to get to where his parents want him to be. That was a bit of the background, but this one night is where the story starts to get fun. One night, Li Shang was convinced by his friends to go out with them clubbing, but not tell his girl. They're like, oh, come on. She goes out with her friends all the time. Don't tell her because she won't let you come. You're an adult. You can do what you want. She should trust you and it's not fair for you. And with all of that frustration he has been feeling all these years, it was not very hard to convince him to go. So he went with them. I agree. If you don't trust your partner, you shouldn't be with them. I got enough worries in my life than to play private eye or fucking babysit or monitor the person I'm dating. I'm not your supervisor. I'm not gonna be like, no girls, who's this bitch? Who you with? Where? Who? You been where? Where who? First of all, if you cheat on me once, that's it. We're not getting back together. Taylor Swift. We are never, ever, ever back together. When the trust is gone, so is the relationship. I tend to trust people until I have a reason not to. Also, imagine that reverse. I wish my man would tell me who I can and cannot hang out with, where I can and cannot go. So I don't expect that. I'm not gonna do that to you either. Sorry, I just feel for Lee Shang right now. Like he's hella relatable. So anyway, it's the weekend and he's ready to go out with his boys for the first time in years. Years. It's been 84 years. They hit up some clubs, bars, and lounges in Itaewon. His friends treated him to drinks, gave him all the drinks he could handle. He was really happy he came and went out. He was having the time of his life. Him and his friends are out catching up because he don't get to see them too often. He's either working or he's home with his girl or home waiting for his girl. And like all the boys are sitting there venting about their frustrations with dating. Like, oh, why are women so possessive? It's such a double standard. They can do stuff, but we can't do stuff. The jealousy makes no sense. And they all kind of have a very similar dating experience to vent about with each other. And it was awkward because while they were having this conversation, Dahe called Li Shang. <laughs> Apparently it was normal for her to call him and check in on him and he has to pick up the phone call to like verify his location. But he knew, uh oh, if I answer the phone here, she's gonna hear all this music and she's gonna know I'm not in my house. So he was gonna try and take a step outside to answer this phone call, but his friends took his phone and was like, no let it ring you're not talking to her right now they're like ask for forgiveness not permission <laughs> so like they took his phone and they're like deal with the mess tomorrow have fun with us now for tonight like you never come out enjoy this so they took his phone he's struggling to get it back from them during the struggle for Lee Shane to get his phone back it led to them being pushed into a trio of girls they all stopped the struggle the friends keep the phone they won and they're like oh I'm so sorry apologizing to these three girls it's two foreigners and one Korean one of the foreigners, her name is Kelly. The other foreigner, not really relevant to the story. And the Korean girl will call her Suyun. So anyway, like the girls are all cool about it and they thought it was funny. They're like, why are y'all fighting over a phone? Like what's going on? So they explained that they were trying to keep their phone from their friend because he has a really toxic, controlling, abusive, possessive girlfriend. And the girls are like, oh my God, no. Why are you with her? Break up with her. You don't deserve that. So his friends basically proceed to share his life story with these three strangers in the club. Despite his protest, he's like, stop, like, stop, come on, like, stop it. Hey, you're embarrassing me, stop it. Please stop, baby, stop being. They're like, he's always worked so hard to make his parents happy. He's a people pleaser. He doesn't take care of himself. Everything he does is for her or his parents. He neglects himself. He lets himself go. And then they're like, you know, she's like really beautiful and he's just average looking. And that's when the girls cut him off. They're like, wait, don't say that. You're not just average looking. You're really handsome. And they're basically explaining that he feels like he has to make it work with her because she's so pretty. But Kelly especially wanted to let Lee Shang know, you're handsome. You're hot as fuck. I'd smash. So you're telling me there's a chance. 
Yeah! And of course, this makes Li Sheng blush. He's like, <laughs> come on, eh? <laughs> Jin Chao. Now, his friends sit back and read the situation. They're taking notice. They're looking at this girl flirt with their homie, and they're thinking about the girlfriend that he has that they hate, and they're like, Ah, <gasps> oh, chills. Literal chills. They're ready to plot now. So remember, Li Sheng's friend still has his cell phone. And now this foreigner is flirting with Li Sheng. His friends proceed to choose absolute chaos. I choose violence. And they decide that the next time Da He calls, she will definitely call soon, that they're going to answer the call and just let it play. They're not going to say anything. They're going to try to get close enough to Li Sheng and Kelly and maybe hear some flirtation going on. But the music will definitely be picked up on this phone. So she will know that he's out. He's in the streets. They had to wait but like three minutes before Da Hit called back again. So they answer the phone and they get ready for the fallout. So they try to get the phone close enough to Kelly and Li Shang to pick up something incriminating and flirtatious. But their dumbasses wasn't paying attention. Li Shang noticed and he snatched his phone back and hung up. You had one job. Just the one. He asked his friends like, yo, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? And they're like, you need to leave this girl. She's not good for you. Run. Keep in mind, this conversation slash argument is happening in front of these three girls and they're just like, damn, that, that sucks, dude. But the girls do side with the boys. They're like, relationships aren't meant to make you more stressful. You're not supposed to feel bad about yourself or more tense. And then Suyun being the other, she was one of the Korean girls. She's a Korean, native Korean person. So she totally relates to the pressure from parents and stuff. She says parents are too controlling. They meddle in their kids' lives. They focus on their projection, their desires for their kid. They don't care about what their kid actually wants for their own lives. And then when these kids go on to kids, themselves, they wonder why and wonder where they went wrong. So then Sion's like, do what makes you happy, fuck them. I'm sure they'd accept you with any decision you make as opposed to you being dead. And of course, everyone agreed with that. And then Kelly chimes in, shit, I'm single. I volunteer! I volunteer! I volunteer as tribute. Everyone instantly became Li Sheng's wingman. His friends are like, come on, what's the worst that could happen? At least have a meal with her. Like, she's a really pretty girl. She seems nice. So someone different. You can always make a friend. Li Sheng said, you know, the drinks were getting to him a little bit and all these people in his ear telling him exactly how he's been feeling for the past few years. It didn't take much to convince him to, yeah, okay, let's go for dinner with this girl, Kelly. So Kelly says she'll make the plans. Just give him your number and she'll be in touch. He was really relieved that for once, someone else took the initiative and like planning something for him because he damn sure wasn't getting that from Dahye. He said it was nice to be pursued for once and he felt a nice boost in his self-esteem. So now that they've all exchanged contact information, Kelly and her trio of friends, they decided to part ways with the guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. Have a lot of fun. I'll be in touch with you soon, Li Shang. And before Su Yun left, she said, fuck that girl. She makes us all look bad. <laughs> so when the girls left, Li Shang still with his friends and of course Dahye is still blowing up his phone. She just heard him talking to some girl. She heard club music, and then the line just cut when he hung up. I didn't mean to end his life, I know it was all right. Normally, Li Sheng would be worried about this. He'd be worried about making her mad. He'd be worried about what she's going to think. But right now, he does not care. He's left to reconsider everything. For some reason, what Su Yun said really stuck with him and stayed in his brain. And then, sadly, he said, what if one day I snap and I can't take it anymore and I end up killing myself. Now, of course, none of this is new. Like, this is stuff his friends told him for years, but hearing it from a stranger, three strangers, just really made it hit home. Because obviously, you know, your friends are a little biased, but if strangers are telling this to you too, for some reason, it just stuck with him more. Plus, you know, seeing other women around him kind of encourage him and flirt with him and make him feel good about himself was a nice change of pace. He's like, hmm, there really are more options out there. So Li Shang said, fuck it. He couldn't wait to talk to Da He again and stand up for himself and have fun tonight, but deal with this tomorrow, like his friends have been saying. So yeah, he had a good night out with his friends. He was happy he came, did not regret it at all, but he did wake up the next day to hella missed calls from Da He. He got one text from Kelly though, that's the one he was most excited about. He said his first priority was ending things with Da He because he's not a cheater, and he wanted to pursue things with Kelly with a clear conscience. He said, so Da He called, and she's yelling, she's cursing him out, but he's just sitting there chill with a smile on his face. And it reminded me of that scene at the end of Parasite, when everything was going to shit, but I forgot the son's name, but he just had that rock and he's just like, in the face of such disaster, just smile. He said he didn't hear a word she said before. He just said, you know what? This is over. What you say? Mm, that you only meant well, well, cause you did. He said they should go their separate ways. He hopes she finds happiness with the next person, but then he just hung up. She called back. He ignored it. She left voicemails. He deleted them. She even sent voice notes 
<laughs> in their chat. He refused to listen to a single one. He decided to send one final text and said, I have a date with someone new. I realize you're not good for me. I can't give you what you want. Good luck on the next relationship. And that was the last time he contacted her. But about 20 minutes later, his mom calls him. She scolded him, asking him what he's doing. And he told his mom, I can't take it with her anymore. Like, by the way, he's told her about like the bad stuff, like how she's possessive. He can't hang out with friends who are girls. He can't even hang out with his boss and his coworkers after work. So none of this is new to his mom, but she said to push through. It's normal for couples to fight and disagree. She's only like this because she loves you. Basically told him, suck it up, she's a catch. Damn! Then he finally let it all out, how he felt like he's not living for him, he's living for them. He just finally put everything out there about how he felt and his mom did not budge. It didn't matter though, because Lee Shang already made up his mind. So he gets off the phone with his mom and he replies to Kelly's text where she said, hey, you still alive? <laughs> Joking that his girl probably killed him by now. He replied and said he slept great. It was such a joy to meet her and her friends. And he really wanted to thank them for the impact they had on him that night. Then she asked him when he would be free for the meal that his friends promised he would join her for. And he's like, oh, for you, I can make time. Let me know when you want to meet up. Hello, my fellow citizens. I am the new president of Riz. She's like, well, not to be too pushy, but it is still the weekend. Are you free today? Li Shang's like, actually, yes, I could use some company. Uh, I'd love to get out of the house. Let me know when you're free to meet. So she sends him a location and says, meet me here in about two hours. I'll see you soon. So of course he's starting to get ready. He's like, yo, I'm going on a date with a new bitch. <laughs> and the whole time he's getting ready, he's ignoring dozens of calls from Dahe and his mom. I'm curious how his dad felt about all of this. Like for, for the email, he mostly talked about his mom. He would say either his parents or specifically his mom. So I'm curious with the dad, how he felt. Anyway, about two hours later, he meets up with Kelly and they have a great time. There was so much he had taken for granted, like being told thank you, not being expected to pay for everything, even though he insisted because it was their first time meeting. But she's like, dude, I got you. I know what you just escaped. I can pay for me. It's, it's fine. She complimented him a lot. He felt really supported and encouraged. And on their date, Kelly said, you know, you don't have to necessarily date me, but like, you should find someone who's nicer to you and doesn't make you feel bad about yourself and someone who you feel happy with. And then Lee Shang's like, I mean, like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get to know you, Shouty, if you're okay with that. And Kelly's like, yes, I am. I just didn't want you to feel pressured to date me because of your friends. Like, we can date. Like, if you want that, I want that too. So they ended up going on several dates over the next few months. They spent a lot of time together. They took trips. They went out to eat. They explored Korea. They went to different excursions, exhibitions. They went to Bali together. They had picnics together. He even got some ass. <laughs> Which apparently he wasn't getting from Dahe. He said he didn't know sex could be so fun and emotional, and he thinks that Kelly might have helped him get better at it. Give me more. But sadly, the relationship didn't last that long because she had to leave Korea. And they decided instead of doing long distance, they should just remain friends. And they're still good friends today. Right now, Lee Shang is actually with another girl, and she also happens to be a foreigner. He said he's only dated two foreign girls many Korean girls and he's noticed a few distinct differences. And he said he's not saying this to speak for all Korean girls or all foreign girls, this is just in his personal experience. Even when his friends would sit down and talk about these distinctions, there are clear cultural differences. He said Western women tend to be more independent. Sorry, I had to do a quick battery change. Anyway, he said that in Korean society, Korean women are more reliant on their men, which that's just how the society there is structured. So he said that doesn't really, that's not really something he blames on the women. It's just something he likes about Western women. He said, in his experience, Western women are less controlling. Neither of the women he's dated so far, the two foreigners, none of them told him that he couldn't hang out with girls. Me interacting with another woman would never happen. As I'm finally in the air, there's a girl next to me and she's getting those insecurities and Thoughts. Don't look at girls, okay? Like I told you. Okay. And he said Korean women tend to act pouty, like to get their way, and then go crazy when they don't get their way. He's had many relationships with Korean women and two with foreign women. And he said that he tends to feel more appreciated when he's with a foreigner. He said he feels like with Korean society, they're the ones expected to like plan the dates, do the nice things, and put in nice romantic efforts and gesture gestures. What more do you want from me? <laughs> When he's with foreign girls, he feels like it goes both ways. Like sometimes they do stuff for him, sometimes he does stuff for them. But typically he's used to being the one that has to do everything. He said in Korean society, they're expected to like feed the girl, buy her gifts, cater to her and do what she wants. But with foreigners, he feels like it goes both ways. And again, he, this is not to like say all Korean women are like this or all foreign women are like this because even Suyeon who was Korean Korean knew that that was bullshit how Dahye was treating him. Lee Shang, thank you so much for taking the time to email us. Like I said, we never really get to hear from too many guys on my channel, even though Lately, the male viewership has been going up, so we might hear more from y'all soon. And shout out to your friend who helped you find my channel. Thank you. If you like this story time and you want to hear more of these crazy dating and career story times, 
check out the playlist about to pop up on the end screen. Thanks for watching. If you did, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Annyeong!